everybody. I have some exciting news. I'm going to be doing some distance energy healing, sharing some psychic wisdom. This is for an elephant with Wildlife SOS. Her name is Rosie. And I want to thank the client for this opportunity. I'm really excited to meet Rosie and do healing for her today. Thank you so much for booking this session and thank you so much for sharing with us here on YouTube. I've done sessions for other wildlife uh, SOS elephants, so I'll put links in the description if you guys are interested in checking those out. And if you're interested in booking a session with me, you could do so by visiting my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. I'm also on Patreon at patreon.com slash abbynormalswisdomquest. All right. I'm going to read your goals out loud and then we're going to get started. So you say, I want to connect with Rosie, the elephant with Wildlife SOS. She is the newest elephant rescue, so there is not a whole lot of information about her yet. I do know she was kept with spiked chains around all four of her legs and has lots of wounds and scars, along with being malnourished. The rescue is a bit long and complicated in that they had to go to court in order to secure her. I have no idea what to expect, but I'm so happy she gets to experience a new kind of life full of gentle, loving support. Thanks again, Abby. <laughs> cool. All right. Rosie. I really like that name. Hmm. I'm curious to see what her energy feels like, get to talk to her, see what we can do to help her to help her heal from her memories, any trauma that's echoing through there, heal her body, heal her soul. I'm gonna relax and I'm gonna put out to the universe, what is the most meaningful connection I can make with Rosie, meaningful wisdom and healing that I can share with her and with all of us here to help support her on her healing and this transformation process and um, to live a, a happy and long life with Wildlife SOS. And who knows, maybe some, something beyond that. Okay, this is a little complicated I really want to just, I kind of want to just like frolic around, you know? Hi, Rosie. Hi, how are you doing? And it's not like that. I feel, um, I feel like I have to change my lens of perspective here. Almost like I'm going to have to be looking through a darker lens in order to see what she's seen, okay? Yeah, that, that's correct. And something, um, all right, here's the scene. It is what it is. We're just going to work with it as it is. So I'm kind of like changing my like lenses and we're, we're okay. And we're going to accept that it was a difficult life for her. So we're going to look through the lens of the trauma. So the energetic trauma that we'll see what it looks like. I see her standing and there seems to be, um, a dark, squishy, oozy material is coming down the walls, okay? And then I see that her legs are chained up. These chains actually don't have spikes on them at this time. They're silver. They're shiny. They're pretty. They're beautiful chains. And I see a little ballerina inside of her, a little girl who's a ballerina. And I see her on her tippy toes and I hear the sound of bones breaking. And I see um, a little ballerina girl on her tippy toes and she must learn how to maintain um, balance on her tippy toes because she's a ballerina, of course. But then I hear the degradation of her toes and her toes actually breaking. But I still see this uh, beautiful little girl and she's holding her pose and she's a ballerina and she does not cry. And she smiles while her bones and her toes are breaking. And I go to tell her, it's okay. You don't have to be on your tippy toes anymore. And she's like, but what are you talking about? I'm a ballerina, look at this is what I do. 
This is what I do. Hmm. So uh, there is some, you, you could say programming here that is saying, um, in order for you to survive, in order for you to um, have the best life you possibly can, you're going to smile, you're going to give us a, a good show, and you're going to stay on your tippy toes, and you're not going to show any hurt or upset about this. You're going to smile, and you're going to um, be delightful, and we're going to take you in, and you're going to give us a reason to feel better about our lives, and thank you so much. We applaud you for this. And it's like um, ingrained. So to not be on the tippy toes, it feels like I'm failing, feels like uh, it's strange to do the opposite, which is actually balanced. So to embrace balance um, seems incorrect, seems wrong. And this, I will say that Rosie has some definite trauma to the inner child energy. Hmm. I keep, I keep wanting to. Something about her, it makes me feel playful. It makes me feel innocent. It makes me feel like rosy cheeks. It makes me feel um, like dancing. It makes me feel like a child. And so seeing this image, I, I feel like she is very childlike at heart. And the spirit who, of who she is is very childlike. I feel like the spirit of who she is is actually a beautiful little ballerina. And I feel like the spirit of who she is is someone who wants to make other people happy, even if it's to break herself down in order to make others happy. And so we're going to work on that because uh, I think there's a reality check. And Rosie, I, I'm talking to her saying, you know too, that it, you can't break yourself down in order to please others. You, I mean, I know we're talking about survival here. And we're not just talking about putting on a show or entertainment. It's, it's literally survival. But something inside your soul says, um, I must keep going. I must keep going to make others happy. Then I'll be broken down. <sighs> I'm wondering if there's been other lifetimes too. Lifetimes of service and being broken down in the process of serving and trying to figure out that that's not balanced. And now this lifetime being broken down as an elephant, and I don't know if she was an elephant of service or entertainment, um, but I just keep seeing this little girl as a ballerina and everybody's applauding her, but her bones and her toes are breaking. She's in a lot of pain, but she never shows it on her face. And she just wants to make people happy. But here we're looking at survival. There's a major co complexity going on in... I mean, it's, it's a psychological thing going on here. It's a self-worth thing. And I, I feel like she doesn't want her feet to be healed. I feel in a way that... Um, when she's a bad elephant, her bones should be breaking. When she's a bad girl, then her toes should be breaking. And she should still smile and make everybody happy. And it's almost like trying to break the spirit of something natural and turn it into something robotic. Turn it into, I to tell you to do this and you do it. And if your bones are breaking, you're going to smile. And nobody's going to know. And you're going to do it. It's a, psych it's a psychotic thing. She doesn't, I'm going to tell you right now, energetically, energetically, the energies are saying, no, my, my feet will remain broken and I will continue to smile. And no, that's not the way forward. So I'm going to have to change this. She's holding on to broken feet. She's holding onto it as though this is, this is normal. This is the way it should be. This is the way it's supposed to be. I also feel that I'm telling you, Rosie is complicated here. There's some major psychological damage going on. As you could say, um, learn behaviors for survival um, intermixed with 
trying to create joy for others while you're breaking and then d determined to still hang in there. And this feels like other lifetimes too. And something her soul needs to figure out here. I don't know that she had a choice really in this lifetime. I mean, it seems to me like it was going to be like this. But eventually she needs to learn that she matters too in the equation. All right, I'm going to have to go to the little girl because when I try to go to the elephant to heal her feet, um, it's like there's no elephant. There's no elephant. It's just a little ballerina, a little girl. And she's going to get in trouble. She keeps telling me to stop helping her. She's going to get in trouble. And I tell her to look clearly with her eyes and don't, don't play any mind games here with yourself or with me. You can't. Because there's literally nobody in this audience. She says, oh, my parents are going to be mad. I have to put on a show. I have to put on a show. If I'm not out there, I'm going to get in trouble. Nobody's coming. There's nobody here. You're putting on a show for nobody. If, I, if that's true, then her life was a lie. She, she's starting to... I'm telling you there's major damage here to her mind. I don't know how to understand it fully yet because she's starting to turn pure white when she sees that there's nobody in the audience and everything's starting to wake up and it's terrifying what she's waking up to. And you know how you're supposed to love your parents. Well, these parents are... They look like um, sweet, uh, loving, uh, it seems like, uh, like World War II era and the way they're dressed and the way their hair is. And uh, they have, um, they're, they're good looking people and they're, they're younger parents. This is maybe a six or seven year old girl. I'm learning to become a ballerina and a professional ballerina at like age six or seven. And I see the parents are not as beautiful on the inside as they are on the outside. They're horrifying looking. And when I show her what her parents really look like, um, she gets angry at me. She like slaps my hand really hard. And she tells me I'm mean. I'm a bad person. And she, she says, my parents are nice people. My parents are good people. You're bad. You're a bad person. And her broken feet or broken toes and she's running to her parents and crying and saying, make, make me go away. Make me go away. <sighs> I tell you what, the, this, uh, this is not rooted in this lifetime. This is coming from other, some other lifetime and it, it's still, we're still working through this in this lifetime as an elephant. She, she will do whatever her parents ask of her. She will be whatever um, actress, mannequin, whatever um, program, whatever her parents need her to be. Um, she will be that. And she will be perfect at it. She will literally be an actress in everything of her life. She, will be, she won't even be there as a soul or a spirit. She will just be an actress her whole life. She'll be an actress in relationships and friendships. She'll be an actress as a parent herself. She'll be an actress. She won't even be in her own body. I see um, we've got a peanut here with the shell and we just crack it and then there's a little nuts inside. Yummy. No, they're empty. It's, it's empty. It's like I crack it open. There's nothing inside. And I say, where are you, Rosie? You don't, you, you do not dedicate your life. You, you have to be part of the equation of your own life. You have to be. She's, she was, she's not there. I mean, she's, she will do whatever she's asked in order to please those who are important. 
and they're more important than she'll ever be. She didn't, she wasn't born to be a person. She wasn't born to be herself. She was born to serve or to suit the needs of everybody else but herself. She's got some hardcore lessons that she's still f figuring out at the soul level. And my gosh, these are difficult lifetimes. It's interesting how it seems to me like the, the path isn't, to have a lifetime yet where she's completely nurtured because she's not letting that in because she must learn how to nurture herself first. And, and until she does that, it's like she's going to block herself from having lifetimes that are where the real comfort is because she can't accept the real comfort yet. No wonder she's with Wildlife SOS because it's like we everybody all the souls are like rosie we want you to know what real love is and you we don't want you to put on the show while your bones are breaking like we want you to receive some support here we want you to know that you are the center of our attention not because you put on a good show but because you were happy because your spirit was smiling because we got to watch you just have a joyful life for you still inside her is the, her love for these twisted parents, her obsession with, with pleasing them, her dedication to pleasing them. She's like a robot. I mean, she'll put herself through whatever pain necessary to please these two. Hmm. All right, I'm going to go to Rosie the Elephant. Not Rosie the little girl now. I'm going to try to see Rosie the elephant. She's uh, not in there. She's again like a peanut and we crack it and there's nothing in there. And I've got to figure out how in the world are we going to bring her soul back to her body? Because she's adopted pain as love or as normal or as part of this. Or her role or her purpose is always going to be she will be in pain to please everybody else. This is going to be a bit terrifying for her. I will say that her trauma is so ridiculously extreme, uh, psychologically and at the soul level, because when I, I'm going to take the chains off of her feet. We still have the dark oozy stuff, but it's not really coming down. It's just sort of staying still. But I'm going to take these pretty little bracelets off her feet. Um, and, I, and to be honest, the bracelets are comfort. They're more like bracelets and they're beautiful and they're pretty and they're for a pretty girl. Um, but when I, I remove them, she feels naked. She feels exposed. She feel, feels ugliness. She feels threatened. She feels terrified. She needs those bracelets back on. This is going to, this is very disappointing that I'm going to have to do this. <sighs> When it comes to, so I'm taking this off and she's just screaming bloody murder, okay? She is screaming and terrified. So we'll just keep them on. But what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to create the illusion that there's, there's going to be more pain if she doesn't take these off. So now we're going to have to create the effect as though her feet are going to be actually cut off. And she can keep her pretty little bracelets and then we'll just remove your feet and you can have your pretty little bracelets. See, I have a nice little saw here and I'm just going to saw your feet off because you like them broken anyway. So now we can have a lot of fun here, a lot of pain here. What do you want? You want to have feet with no bracelets or do you want to have bracelets and no feet? Which one? It's just, it's like breaking the program here. It's starting to make sense. But she says she doesn't want me to just remove them. She wants me to cut the bracelets off. <sighs> okay, I got a big scissor. I, why do you need me to cut them off? I mean, this seems kind of strange. Like, she's, she's got some issues, man personality issues like so she kind of yells at me to like cut them off 
I was like, mm, I don't like you talking to me that way. I think I can cut your feet off instead. Or you can be nice and we'll just make them disappear. She's again starting to have a major blip in her, her processes. But we I really don't like having to go down this route, but it's the only way to help you understand that you don't need the bracelets. And I'm not going to cut these off. And I'm not going to please some demonic, weird, psychological thing you got going on. Because the goal here is for you to be you now and for you to know you're set free. I'm so glad we're helping Rosie because even what we're accomplishing here, um, for her to actually have fit really good um, progress with physical healing, um, we need to ignite that beautiful spirit inside of herself. We need to mend this trauma um, and we need to remove in the energy world these bracelets just by they're not there anymore. They're gone. But it's a weird comfort need. It's like a comfortable, it's comforting to have them because it's familiar. And this goes back to another lifetime. I'm quite convinced she was a ballerina in another lifetime with really ridiculously awful parents that didn't let her live her life, that she had to be like their perfect little doll child. Okay, this is getting better. She's a lot more here, okay? There's a lot more... I can hug her. I can actually hug her. But not for very long. Because she's, again, holding onto those bracelets and really not sure how to let love exist for her yet. To actually give into it and trust in it. And this is in her energy field, okay? This is, we're clearing out all this trauma. And maybe at the conscious level, she knows she's being helped and taken care of, but this is unresolved and this is ill saturated in her energy field. And let's speed up this healing process. Let's really get her to where she wants to be in her heart. Because beneath the surface of all this junk is this gorgeous angel, this beautiful little sweet, give anything to make her parents happy child. This is weird, okay? I swear to God, she was a human in a past life because she, she's um, removing her elephant feet in order to take the bracelets off and she has human feet on an elephant body. Obviously, they're huge human feet. They're human feet. <laughs> I was say, you look hilarious. Are you doing that to be funny or are you trying to like... Is this like the next step of you protecting this process? <laughs> Has it, have you seen yourself? You look funny. <sighs> she says in her human feet, it feels like there's glass. Lots like 10,000 shards. Like there's just so much glass in here. But she won't lie down in order for me to remove these glass shards. And they say, I'm not going to be your mean parents. I'm going to be nurturing when I ask you to lie down. So it's actually your choice if you want to lie down or not. I'm not telling you what to do. But if you want me to remove these glass shards, I can do that for you. But I want you to ask it of me. I'm going to tell you what to do. She echoes as being... Um, this is a, this again, she's a older woman now. I mean, we're talking probably um, 40s. Has absolutely 
interesting features with she's human woman she's wearing red lipstick and a red dress and she has blonde hair and i love the way that her hair is it's so interesting and she's wearing some pearl it's like gold with pearl and then there's um earrings and there's kind of like couple pearls and it's like a drop um they're kind of hanging here it's really beautiful it's really fancy looking even white gloves it's really fancy looking and she insists that uh, she doesn't know what I'm talking about and something in her soul says just admit you know just admit you know she's really because of this is echoing back to the girl with the, the ballerina and the parents it's that she's not allowed it's like she's not allowed to exist in pain as somebody who needs help to heal her pain she has to exist as somebody who's stronger than her pain in order to make everybody around her happy but she's also um she'd be a very difficult person i mean she's gorgeous looking so i mean there'd be an appeal for a relationship but because she's just so beautiful to look at but she's um hollow inside But I touch your heart and I say, you're not hollow at all. And I'm going to give you a voice so that you can at least admit, yes, you need help. Do not be too stubborn to let help help you. This little girl could never ask for help. Didn't matter what kind of torture she was put through to be the best. And I tell you, for such a beautiful woman, she has some really ugly toes. Because as I look at this woman, I'm removing her shoes like Cinderella kind of thing. And I'm a very kind man, and I'm looking at these toes of hers, and I feel very sad for her. I don't even know how she's able to walk in high heels. And now I'm looking at Rosie and she's lying down in some big, like there's lots of hay and it's quite soft for her to lie down in this hay. And I'm looking at her human feet connected to her elephant body. And unfortunately, it's, it's almost, it's all like these glass shards absorbed inside. And then she had to learn how to walk on really painful feet. And you can't fix it. You can't remove the pain and you're going to have to live with it. That's like um, the outcome. I say, who, who decided that? I never decided that. You decided that. Stop deciding stuff like that. We're going to fix you up. Again, there's a really um, awful energy screams out of her face at me. And she flickers between being a human woman and uh, the, an elephant. And she insists that nobody can help her. And why would she need help anyway? You say, because look, look at that face you just made. L listen to that voice of yours. Uh, that, that pretty much speaks for itself. You need help. You desperately need help. So I say, we'll just let the glass shards stay in here because you're not ready to let them go yet. But what we'll do is we'll create a, a nice warmth for these feet of yours and we'll create a little bit of Novocaine just for now, okay? Just to help you cope and get to know what it's like to not have pain in your feet. And once you start to enjoy not having pain in your feet, then we'll, we'll just remove these little glass shards. And we'll start to rebuild your feet. Let's just do some 
rebuilding work. No big deal. She doesn't want hope where there is only hopelessness. And she doesn't like being lied to, apparently. <laughs> it's like, who's lying to who here? But uh, she doesn't believe me that we can fix her feet. And she'd rather live with her broken feet. Because then she at least knows that this is the way it is. Instead of believing that they could heal. I say, I think we've come quite a long ways. I think you're making some amazing strides already with this process. And look where we started. And you don't have the pretty bracelets anymore. We're actually making progress where I can even put your human feet on your elephant body into just a nice warm energy and just turn off the sensation of pain for a little bit. Her eyes are turning purple in color and something is changing here and I'm getting absorbed into all the glass shards in each one of her feet. And I exist in the glass shards. And the glass shards represent really beautiful pools, swimming pools. And I see uh, myself, I'm swimming in a really beautiful swimming pool and it's a night sky. And I really like swimming at night. And something about the water is really, it's a friend of mine. Something about the water is really nice. I'm starting to see an image of this swimming pool in the night sky and a woman swimming. I also feel myself as the woman swimming. And I see this scene duplicated just thousands of times. And it's, I see it everywhere. And this is very refreshing. This is very sincere. This is real. This is something I can have. This is something that is comforting me. And it's not a person, it's, it's literally a swimming pool and a night sky. And it's nurturing her soul. And it's nurturing her feet and it's nurturing her body and it makes her feel comforted. There's uh, something gross here, like, um, I don't know, like, it's um, grainy, it's kind of a bubbly acid, it's got a stinky smell to it, and I'm kind of, it's just oozing out of the bottom of her feet right now, and it's, I'm just touching it here, she's oozing out of her feet, and there's something odd about that's like there's rock, big rocks now. Her feet don't look like human feet. They look like elephant feet. And there's these big rocks in each one of her feet. And this oozy substance. And... Uh, she, okay. I don't know what this means yet. Because... I'm going to tell you what the echo is, but that doesn't mean that's what it really means. But I see her standing and all this ooze is coming out of her feet. And I hear the sound, um, I, I want to have a baby. And her, this part of her body is swollen like it is, has a child that she could give birth to. But it, it's like it's died inside of her. The baby has died inside of her and it remains inside of her and there's this constant desire to um, give birth to it. But the body doesn't ever activate and the baby just remains in there. And so I, I'm seeing this desperate need to release this baby which has died, which is still there. And the body never goes into this like shift. And the mind just feels like this, this is there. 
I don't know what to make of it. It's, I don't know what to make of the shape of the body that is inside of her. It's more of a bo bonier um, object. Then it's just a baby elephant. It looks um, weird. It's just, it doesn't look like anything familiar. It just looks like um, really massive bones that are kind of random with uh, some materials that are connected. She's really sensitive to me going and looking at her sacral chakra. She doesn't want me going there. But what I do is I snap my fingers and I relax all of her chakras. And I send her an instantaneous signal that there's no harm going to happen. What you're nervous about is the healing. The healing is going to expose you to the memories. It's going to expose you to what you've been through. It's going to expose you to... Um, the emotional trauma, all this endurance that you've got, other lifetimes, and it's difficult. It's This is not easy to digest stuff. So of course we're going to resist it. <laughs> so when I relax all of her chakras and I'm not, I'm not letting her to react, it just, I'm really opening up the sacral chakra and this awful, nasty, stuff is just kind of coming out and it's extremely intolerably shameful and it's full of memory and it's full of embarrassment it's full of suffering it's full of pain it's full of endurance of that pain it's full of uh, the life she didn't want to live that she ended up living what wasn't fair There's major stuck. These bones are not easy to come out. They just keep getting stuck on their way out. And they're really big and massive, long things, okay? A sacral chakra isn't just like this tiny little space. This is an infinite space. So it's like we need to relax it and open this up here. We need to release these bones. Honestly, it is happening. And as this more of this comes out, she feels like she's okay. And her head's spinning a little bit, but she's breathing. She's uh, comfortable. She's relaxed. She's uh, not really... Everything we saw and all this trauma about her feet is starting to disappear. Like it never really happened. Like she doesn't remember. Her energy field is just quickly moving on from this. Like her feet feel so much better. They feel like um, there's opportunity for them to heal. And it might not be perfect, but it's going to be a major improvement. There's more that's still, it's still coming out, it's still flushing out. It's a lot stuffed in there. And it's extremely random looking. I don't know, white, there's white fibers in these bones and there's weird tissue pieces, okay? And there's lots of liquidy juice. There's still a lot more. This is coming from her heart, through her emotional gut, through her sacral chakra and out. This is more black and green and gooey. Again, she feels lighter on her feet. She feels more comfortable on her feet. I don't feel that all that psychological stuff is in the way. I see her resting peacefully on the hay and being grateful for the help. And all these other echoes is just simply echoes. She has, I'm telling you, she has an extremely love, lovely soul. An extremely lovely soul. I feel like her soul's natural state is to be a giver. And she's had lifetimes that really messed with her head and her body and her soul about the gift of who she was and the giver that she was. Even to the point of becoming soulless. 
And so working through it here in this lifetime as Rosie the Elephant. Because she's actually quite angelic. I feel like this is a really good, um, this is really, really good what we've accomplished here. It's hard to know what to make of it at first. Though we just have to work through one step at a time. And then as we transform that energy and we work through all that echo, however traumatic and extreme it wants to be, we just keep working through it and we just start to rewrite the program, right? And we welcome the love in, we welcome the support, we open the chakras, we release what we don't need anymore. We circulate the love within ourselves as well. We know that it's safe to receive love and support now. We've experienced it in other ways and it was so hard and we even lost ourselves. We want to heal now. I mean, she's actually glowing at this point. I feel like there's a long, like there's a lot we can do here, but this is an incredible um, step in the right direction. And so glad we could do this for her. You are, you are helping Rosie. Like her soul is never going to forget that you did this for her. Even if she doesn't consciously understand it today, she's going to under, in all of time, your soul is being thanked for this. It's a really extraordinary good deed. And thank you for caring about her. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this experience and I wish you a wonderful rest of your day.